Hi, John Quinn, Director of Science and Product Development at Flojo, here to give you the brief introduction to version 10.10. .10. There are lots of different demos and webinars that are available on our website for an in-depth dive, but here's the quick view of what's new to version 10.10. .10. So first off, you'll notice that there have been some changes and rearrangements to the bands. There's a few extra tools and a few places, you know, familiar faces in new places. The cytometry band now includes both spectral plots and a spectral population viewer, which I will demo in a second so that you can view data spectrally. File, edit are the same, but workspace you'll notice by default now has an algorithms band in which TCNA, Cluster Explorer, MEM, etc. are now grouped together, so you have greater arrangement flexibility, and populations is a separate band which now houses the hyperfinder tool built into Flojo, as well as the compare populations tool moved over from the tools band. Tools will include a separate band now for quad gates, so that you can do these variety of automated quad gating tools in one place. Um, you will also now see under the preferences that cytometers contains advanced rules. So I've dragged in a file from the S8 Facts Discover, and I would like to create some custom advanced scaling preferences for this tool. This can be done on any cytometer you want. Whatever I pick out from the list is what we'll be designing advanced scaling preferences for. But I wanted to highlight the S8 tools here, uh, the S8 and these tools here, just because there are a lot of parameters that come with this new cytometer. So if I hit advanced rules, you'll see this menu pops up. You'll see that I have several rules here. If I want to make a new one, I just say add rule and give it a name of some kind. I can edit one by selecting it. And the way that this goes, I've called one eccentricity and I've said add condition, parameter name contains and I entered the term just ECC so that it would find the eccentricity parameters. You'll then say transformation and say, hmm, perhaps I would like a different scale than that. In fact, I think eccentricity is best viewed on a linear scale that goes pretty much from zero to one. And so we could do something like that so that when the data are automatically scaled brought in, when they're brought into Flojo, it'll be exactly as you want it to be. And you can apply as many of these different rules as you'd like for any given cytometer so that you can have as complex a set of scales as are required to analyze your data. So let's say okay to those two things. Let's look at those new spectral viewing tools, uh, spectral plots, a nice way that if you wanted to look at, say, all your detectors for a given population, you could do so. There are a ton of different ways to do this. Uh, just dragging in this first population here, I have, as you can see here, on the options, band shown, density shown. I can turn off any of these things if I want to go just density. If I want to go to violins, I can do so with or without the density and showing the bands, etc. of various confidence intervals. And I can also configure these to show less or more than all the density. So maybe let's just take the primary 90% or so and thin this down a little bit so we get a different view of this. You can also at any point draw a gate on some or all part of a given signal and create a new drive population from it. So if you wanted to use this tool for, I don't know, creating a positive population compensation or whatnot, it is now present in your workspace in the background. The spectral population viewer is intended to allow you to compare populations. So if I click on a population and say view, I can accept this. And if I want to compare something, I can just drag it in. There are a variety of ways to look at this data as well. So you'll see similar options for the display. You'll also get some naming population choices where maybe only the sample name or population name might be of interest for me so I can tell them apart. I also have the opportunity to drag specific negatives in so that if I would like to, for example, normalize the data, I could do so with respect to a particular negative population. And so I could either display it via for just the positive values or positive negative if I also was including a specific negative spectral signature to view with these data files. So we've got those tools in here. Uh, one tool also that I will mention here briefly is just that if you have brought in spectral FX uh, enabled data, so data off the S8, where this new proprietary unmixing technology adds keywords to the data, there is just an apply BD spectral FX right click option here that you can then take advantage of that to apply this new kind of unmixing to this data. I'm going to briefly switch to a different workspace here and point out, since I have some clusters in here, that I could now 
look at the Cluster Explorer with a variety of extra, of extra tools that are now built in. So Cluster Explorer, I can pick a variety of things here. I have the ability if I want to show uh, populations that are not clusters within the Cluster Explorer. So that is an interesting application. Uh, we could do so if we want, but for now, let us look at some clusters created more traditionally. I'm gonna minimize this as this all pops up and fills in. Uh, we've given you a little extra space to work with in the heat maps. We have colored the name of the clusters to match the cluster shown in all the other graphics. If I click on any of these clusters, um, you'll see that these are hiding across. I can multi-select. Let's pick two that maybe this makes sense to do something uh, similar on, like picking population four and zero. I'm going to multi-select and mention that you can now, under clusters, do things like merge them, uh, remove outliers if you want. You can export any kind of clusters that you've that you've created through merging as new populations in Flojo, either as a single selector cluster or as a whole new cluster set. I like this one for the ability to go back and now use a holistic set of clusters. If you take the whole set, then everything will be numbered uh, nicely. So there's some new tools built in here. Uh, I think those are the, uh, the primary ones, but there's also just some smaller niceties like the ability to drag and drop and rearrange the order of any of the parameters. You see that updates on the line plot above, the ability to drag and drop and reorder any of the clusters and so forth. And so just a little bit of extra functionality built into the Cluster Explorer. I'm going to minimize that, bring Flojo back up. There's my new cluster sets. I will point out that I've already gone through and applied MEM scores to these clusters. And one new option that's built in here is that I could go into MEM uh, and choose to export the MEM scores as a CSV file. So if you wanted to get those out in some kind of um, just editable document, no problem. All right. Last thing that I'd like to mention just in this brief overview is that HyperFinder is now built in. HyperFinder is a tool that allows you to take populations identified via cluster and create a series of gates that are say polygons, rectangles, something like that, that can be sorted uh, so that you can recapitulate a cluster population in a manner that you could take back to either, you know, any fax diva enabled cytometer or the S8 and then sort on those. And so you do so simply by picking the top level population saying hyperfinder and then give hyperfinder rules for what is it allowed to use to identify those same cells. Let's pick essentially everything up here. How many gates can it use as a maximum? Uh, should it downsample? What type of algorithm should it use? And then which population would you like it to find? So let's pick one here. Let's go with this. Uh, you'll see that these have MEM scores associated with them. So I can tell MEM scores range from zero to 10 and either can be plus or minus. I can tell that this population two has a really distinct interferon gamma signature, plus 10 compared to the reference population, let us recapitulate that one and then we'll be able to sort on it. If I say OK, HyperFinder goes about the process of building gates. It's going to divide your data up into both a training set and a target validation set so that the training set, it'll essentially just draw boundaries around that to make sure that those cells are within a gate and then it'll test it to see that these are not, you know, they're still generalized enough uh, and not overly specific for the particular green cells that were chosen, that the red cells that are also part of your population but were just isolated as a validation set are going to also fall in that gate. You will get an F measure score. Perfect is 1.0. F measure is the harmonic mean between um, just getting things um, you know, precision and recall, getting like not including all the things you want and not adding anything that you don't want to it. Uh, so you can see that we're getting a pretty good F score already. It'll show up pictures of the gates in a second, and then they'll be added to the workspace as a series of gates labeled Hi-Fi gates, which can then be either exported as a Diva template uh, or Diva workspace, or simply saved as a Flojo workspace and opened up in the core software on the new S8. Uh, judging by the 0.99 we're achieving now, this should be wrapping up any second now. And voila, here comes our pictures. There we go. So to recapitulate that population that was found via clustering, we needed three gates. If I close the HyperFinder tool, I will see those three gates. I could, if I want, either export to BDFaxDiva using this tool here 
or hit save and open MDS8. Okay, that is a super quick outline of what is in the new 10.10. .10. Please check out our other content to see in more detail what there are, or even better yet, try it out yourself. Have a great day. Talk to you in the future.